You're just getting hammered by thunder and lightning. And all of a sudden, the sky opened up and it is raining again. <laughs> lightning strike was within just about a half a mile, according to uh, my weather app. Pretty awesome. Pretty cool. It's about 6 p.m. on Thursday night, and I just finished uploading uh, the video for this week. I'm just kind of kicking back and relaxing. Oh, there's a flash. That's lightning. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that, one, that one got my attention. What the heck? The chickens have no idea what the heck is going on. I got to clean this window. Oh, my gosh. slept like the dead last night. Holy smokes. Put you out oh, it's my first day of vacation and I think I got eight hours of sleep last night. Woke up once at about four. I said, yeah, that's just gonna work. <laughs> so I've got a lot of plans for this next week. When I'm on vacation, I'm staying here at the cabin. I live here at the cabin all the time anyway. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I need to get some stuff done before the winter gets here. It's mid-August right now. I want to get this window put in. I want to get that roof completed. I want to get myself in a better situation than I am going into the season. So I'm not struggling like I was last year trying to get everything to work. Last minute. But I'm going to start everything off with some fresh coffee for breakfast. Fresh coffee, bacon, and eggs. Sounds pretty good, huh? Fresh eggs from the chickens. They were nice enough to participate. I've had a lot of comments in the last few videos about, well, I'm here to see the build and I'm not here to see the cooking. That's the first one. If you've been around for any amount of time on this channel, or you've looked at some of the other videos on there, you see that I do in fact cook. It's part of life for me, right? I love cooking. I love good food. <coughs> and I eat pretty well for somebody who lives off the grid. So my only power is what I could generate right now off the generator to top off the batteries because uh, I haven't got my solar panels in place yet. And the other comment I get is about the kilt. So I, I, I started wearing the kilt. I bought the kilt maybe 10, 15 years ago. Well, probably 15 years ago now. And uh, I used to wear it at Celtic fairs because, you know, I love that whole, I'm Irish. Well, Irish and Sicilian. But I love that whole culture. I love the music. I love that the happiness, the, the stories, the joy that they have, you know. Um, so I bought the kilt for wearing a kilt at fairs, and then, you know, when I finally moved up here in Alaska, I had the kilt, and I thought, man, I should wear that thing. So I started wearing it here and there on occasion, and it's so comfortable. Gosh, it's so comfortable. But I pretty much wear it whenever I can. So if the kilt offends you, well, this is probably not the channel for you. Because you're going to see a lot of it. Matter of fact, I'm looking at buying a new one now. Alright, I'm going to get breakfast going here, and then I'm going to sit outside, have my breakfast in the sunshine on the deck, and get a better plan for what I'm going to get done over the next couple of days.
Cut my finger this morning. Bottom rope. Oh, you, you hooked a carabiner up to it. This is just another reason why I will never build another roof like this again. <laughs> <laughs> so we got part of it nailed off, but I have to trim 
the front lip of the uh, OST here and get that cleaned up um, before I put the uh, layment, the underlayment on. Uh, and then I was kind of slipping a bit up there, so I went and put my waiter shoes on, and they seem like they're a lot more, um, a lot more contact to them. So I'm probably not going to video much of this because I'm going to be cussing a lot. I have a feeling that it's just not going to be a good thing. It won't be family friendly. <laughs> Okay. I'm not gonna lie, this kicked my butt. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. all, that's oh, half. Yeah. yeah, that's half right there. Yeah. Um, and Todd brought over his harness and uh, his connector um, with the rope slide on his safety harness was was long enough. Mine isn't where I could run it down between my legs and have it here. And what a difference that made, knowing that I could I could lean back and not have to worry about falling off the roof. But yeah. My hands hurt, my legs hurt, my back hurts. Everything hurts. <laughs> One more side to go. And the adrenaline's going through the roof. <laughs> Literally, oh my gosh. So in theory, with that underlayment there, that side of the roof is now dried in. Uh, it's ready for metal. I don't know that we're going to get the other side done today. Um, it's going a lot faster since we changed the way we originally tried to do it. Uh, but part of the reason why it's been pretty easy to do is because I came down to change my shoes and Todd said, why don't you wear these? And these are my fishing waders. Got a rubber sole on the bottom and I'm telling you what, the traction on these on that roof is pretty incredible. Um, well, I'm still, I've still got one hand on the rope and, the, and I'm harnessed into the rope when, uh, when I'm up there working. I'm actually just walking on it, uh, which is kind of kind of psycho, right, for a 9-12 for a pitch roof. I know I complain a lot about it, but I've pretty much, I mean, I did it to myself. Um, and I love how it looks inside the cabin. It gave me a lot of room up there. But, you know, if you're going to do this, you might want to really consider that if you're going to be putting your own roof on. Um, I, I've come to the conclusion also that uh, when I'm done putting the metal on the roof, when I, when I put the ridge cap on there and it's finished, um, I'm not going back on that roof again. It, it, I, I'm nervous when I'm on top of those things, no matter what. Even though I was pretty comfortable up there today, um, it, it's just, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and I'm too old to fall off a roof. Um, you know, I'm too old to freak out on a roof. Uh, so as far as the wood stove goes, I'm gonna make some phone calls and I think I'm gonna have that installed Somebody else can go on the roof for that. I'll pay for that. Um, yeah. Again, you know, if I didn't have the pitch roof that I have, um, it'd be a super simple thing to do. Todd's place, I, I showed you the pictures of uh, earlier. Um, his pitch on his roof is a 412, and that's that's much more doable. That's much You can walk on that. I mean, I literally, you're still strapped in because you're so high off the ground for safety. But you can literally walk on that. You can get down to your knees, and you can do what you got to do. Um, but man, when you start getting to these, these steeper pitched roofs, it's tough. I mean, it's really tough to do. Anyway, I'm going to need a sandwich to see if my legs mellow out a bit. Um, and then Todd's going to come back over and we'll see. I'm sure we'll get at least the, the first run done over there. It took me five runs to get all the way to the top, and it lips over, which is awesome. Because that means when I do the five runs over here, over the top, that will also lip over. And I'll have a double seal on the, on the ridge, so. I'm going to eat some lunch. It's 3.20 in the afternoon.
right, it's five o'clock and we called it a day and it was me that called it because have you ever been swimming all day long and your legs all of a sudden feel like they're dead and they don't want to work anymore? Yeah, that, that was me. But we did manage to get um, everything nailed off on the, you know, for all the misses that, that we had had. And for some reason, and I think it was because we put the, um, the roof jacks at the location we put them on here when we when I was first sheeting this section last winter. Um, for some reason, uh, we missed a whole bunch on this bottom row. So they're all done. Everything's nailed off. Everything's good. I did pull the safety harness um, ring off the top uh, because it can't really be on there going forward anyway. And what, what I did instead was tied the rope of the safety harness, looped it into itself um, around the beam on the bottom of the cabin. Uh, on the other side so it's it's actually working out pretty better because having it on the top of the roof became an issue when I would walk from one side to the other so I I, I literally had to you know extend it way out just to get to one side or the other of the roof while I was uh, tacking down the underlayment um, so by doing it there the pivot point is on the other side right and it's like just in like the second sauna tube in on the cabin um, so while I still have to let a little bit of rope out when I'm going out to the side, it's nowhere near what it was before. And it's just as secure and safe. Um, it was a little iffy there at the beginning. I had to get used to it because it had a little more give, obviously, because the rope's tied into itself. But it, it's perfectly fine. So, yeah, we're doing that tomorrow. Todd's going to come over 9 o'clock in the morning, and we'll go ahead and get back at it again. Uh, we've got dry weather through Wednesday, uh, which means that tomorrow I could actually be, uh, you know, knock on wood, sliding metal on my roof. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, technically, I can slide it on one half now. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, it kicked my butt today. If you want to do this, do this when you're young. Don't wait till you're old like me to do it. You bought a toolbox. A little crash with one. Oh. So Todd's here again, and we have this side of the roof to get the underlayment on. Um, I got rain coming in on Thursday, it's Monday. So we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I fully expect to get this underlayment done today. Um, but then it you know, comes to what happens if the metal's not on the roof before the next rainstorm, am I gonna have to tarp it again? I shouldn't have to, because this underlayment, um, or you did this on your place, Todd, and it rained, right? Yeah. And you had no leaks inside, right? Yeah, so I, I mean, the underlayment, is a water barrier and it actually comes over the top too so that got me to thinking that you know what happens if i get all the metal on the roof but i haven't got the ridge cap done yet again no issue because it comes all the way over the top and and lifts over or lips over so <clears throat> any moisture that gets on there will just run out underneath the metal and that's kind of what the underlayment's for right it gives you that second protection barrier in there so the first one's always the biggest pain in the neck because i can't really do it while i'm standing on the roof um, so we roll out the sheet tack it in place and then from there um, I can go ahead and I can stand on that sheet and do the next one above and the next one above and that's kind of like a one-man project um, as far as at that point uh, but Todd got his router fixed up so I'm gonna go ahead and, and router off the edge on the outside of the uh, uh, sheeting here where I overextended it by a bit um, I got that all cleaned up yesterday on the other side, so we want to get that done before we get this done. Uh, and the other thing was nailing off, like I think I said yesterday, nailing off everything that we missed last winter when it was, I don't know, 20 below zero? <laughs> 10 below zero while we were trying to put the sheeting in place. But overall, it's amazing. The OSB's kind of held up. It looks pretty good. There's nothing on it that I see that, that makes me nervous at all, so. <laughs> So technically, since it's 10 sheets total and we have six sheets done, we're 60% of the way done. Okay. Yeah. So um, that first one, I did, just didn't have the camera running on because basically it was off the ladder and I need the first one on there to basically stand on so that I can work on the ones after that. So I'm gonna go up there now and I'll leave the camera running and we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll throw it into time-lapse mode. Uh, it'll be a little bit shorter and you won't have to watch all the, everything I do and you won't have to hear all the vulgarity and, <laughs> my language gets a bit colorful on here and I don't want that in the videos I've, I've messed up a couple of times and had to bleep a few things out in the last couple of videos so I, I don't want that to happen but I'm usually just cussing it myself I'm 
But yeah, that's the first piece of underlayment. So with that stuff, um, that underlayment right there, it's called gator skin. Um, I got it overlapping the front a little bit. It took a lot longer to trim off that front edge, and it's pretty ugly, but it'll be covered by metal. Uh, mm -hmm. When the roof's on there, I've got the trim piece that goes over there, so that'll be all covered up. But um, the gator skin is actually pretty comfortable to walk on. Uh, I, can keep, I can stay pretty stable on it, and um, you overlap it by about four inches on each roll. There's a line on the top and on the bottom for where you need to be overlapped, and then we're putting it down with staples, although they suggest roofing nails. Uh, I think that's if you're going to have it up there for any long amount of time. Uh, Todd, you read yours, and it was what, 90 days? 90-day warranty. 90-day warranty before you cover it, but it's not going to be 90 days for me. I'm not. It won't be uncovered that much. But I don't know if you can see way, let me get a finger here, way up at the very top. It actually comes over on the top probably about six inches, uh, which is nice because hopefully that means this last layer will go over the other side six inches. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it, and it's. Uh, you'll see what's going to happen. It's just... I get up there, I, I secure one end down, I line it up, uh, staple it all off, and then start working my way across the roof. Okay, so 80% done now. <laughs> got that row done. I got two more rows to go, and basically, like I said, I've been stopping every time because I want to stretch the back out. Yesterday, I pushed myself a bit much, and man, I was hurting real bad. And then my thumbs are all messed up. This thumb's all messed up because I'm of running that release, and there's really no way to do it with your whole hand. Um, so um, I, fought, I fought that this morning. It took forever for my thumb to start working again. But anyway, um, I'm going to go up and get those last two pieces done. I'm not going to record this, but I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. And then Todd and I are going to head into town and pick up metal. When I ordered this, I screwed up. So do yourself a favor, right? Don't give them the dimensions of your house when you order your metal, if you're going to do this yourself. Um, instead, in my case, I said it was you know 20 by 24. Um, and... My house is 20 by 24, but I have a two foot overhang on both sides, so that's 28 feet. So I caught it at the last minute and I ordered the sheets for the sides, you know, the, the extra sheets to make sure that I could get to that 28 feet. Um, so that was fine, but I forgot to tell them to give me enough ridge cap. So I got to swing by uh, North Star Metals to, to get another five foot section of ridge cap that I'll put on the back so that I'll have enough to, to cover the whole top. Uh, but yeah, after this, the next thing is uh, putting the actual, well, prepping the metal and getting ready because I have 16 foot pieces and I only need them to be five or 15 foot four inches. So I'm going to cut off one end um, and the cut end will go up so it'll be under the, the ridge cap. And then um, every piece will be the same at that point. I'm going to overhang it by an inch on the roof itself. Uh, and then after I cut it, I'll get it all drilled out. I'm going to drill basically 10 pieces of metal one whole side at a time and get all the holes pre-drilled before I go up there so I don't have to fight with you know the drill even though these are these are metal screws you know they're they're self-tapping screws I don't want to fight with that at all that's it I'm gonna get up there and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done oh. Oh. nice all right so that's done um, where the, the strap secure piece, folded piece, went on the top, uh, it actually cut it on the other side, so Todd ran me out some Tyvek tape. And I taped that from the bottom up so that, you know, water won't go underneath. And then I taped it up below the seam and then taped everything or, and then stapled everything down over. So I did get an overlay on both sides, which is super awesome. That means the top is, is super secure and dry. Um, one thing I should point out, though, so I bought this harness. Um, for safety on the roof and it's it's got a back strap on it you know it hooks up here on the back um, and the, the bad thing about that is on a roof like this I need to be working in front of me I don't need to worry about the strap on the back and that was what was making me super super nervous yesterday and Todd went and grabbed his kit that he's got um, and he's got mine's the safety bucket and he's got the, the Warner version uh, and this piece on his Right, this piece on his was long enough for me to bring it between my legs, right? So if I'm strapped back here, 
was long enough for me to bring it between my legs and be strapped on my back so that I, I could use the rope, using my feet, but I could use the rope to lean back on um, when I was reloading the stapler and that kind of stuff. And that was a huge, huge difference uh, doing it that way. So yeah, this is, this is Todd's rope. And I don't know, his, his philosophy was, um, you know, most of the stuff that we see people working in front of them on when they're wearing safety harnesses, um, the rope is in front of them. Uh, but for some reason, every time we looked up roof safety harness, they were always behind. But it worked. It made a huge, huge difference. Like I said, though, this piece right here, which is the, what do they call that? Uh, ascender. The ascender. Man, this is why my thumb was killing me this morning. I thought I broke my thumb yesterday because it takes a lot of pressure to move this to release that line to let you to come down. Uh, but I didn't have to do it as much once we put that harness on the other side. Anyway, that's it for this week's video. I'm Sean in Alaska. Um, I know I took a week off there, but it was basically because I didn't have anything to show yet. I really didn't want to just nickel and dime it. Um, this roof is now ready for metal, uh, and that will be the next video. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Todd Shop. He just he got his roof on. His truss is up there. This is why Todd's been busy and not helping me, because Todd's been busy helping himself. <laughs> and Todd swore he was hiring a crew so he wouldn't have to work. How'd that work out for you, Todd? Yeah, I've been working. <laughs> Ward and Cindy. Cindy and Todd. This thing's huge. It's 40 feet by 60 feet. I'll spin the camera around for you. Two big double doors, a man door over there with a window above. Uh, he's got regular, let me back it up here. He's got regular trusses all the way to 20 feet. And then from 20 feet, from where you see those doubled up two eyes there, he's going to have a loft up here. He's got scissor truss, uh, scissor trusses above on that part. And your walls are how tall? 14. 14 feet. Mine are 10. So he went up four feet more. And he'll have a couple of windows back in there as well, but he's not going to worry about that. His main thing is getting the metal on the roof now because he's got the whole roof covered with the... Uh, what's that stuff called that's on the roof now? The underlayment. Yeah, he's got the whole roof already covered in underlayment. He just went and ordered all the metal for the roof, and they told him, well, we might have that done tonight. He said, no, no, no. <laughs> so he'll, he'll get it Monday. <laughs> Big shop. Concrete floor. Stubbed in for a bathroom over here. It's going to be nice.